Okay, now I want to do one of my more favorite textures, and that's the wood grain, because we can get this looking like really, real realistic, distressed wood. And it's done really simply with just these two colors, believe it or not. The BR2 Hot Cocoa and the BR5 Bark. So, how do you make that happen? I'm going to start with the BR2. That's the Hot Cocoa. That's the lighter, sort of warmer brown. And I'm going to use it full strength. And I'm going to um, just color this entire um, wood just flat to start with. And you'll see some of the interesting things that will happen as we build. One thing, though, I will say is I don't color it all flat because I like to keep a little bit lighter hints here and then a lighter hint on the wheel. Oops. So what I'm going to do to start off with is I'm going to fuse the hot cocoa a little bit and then I'm going to try and sort of get some highlights in here. So that would be kind of highlighted in here and then it would get sort of darker around that area there. So let's... Get that kind of that light hint of the tint brown. There we go. And then we're going to start to go into the darker brown. Smooth that little area out there. Don't need a blender pen. Why? Because every time I fuse, I actually turn my pen, it's nice and light, into a blender to blend out that area. Okay. So I, I just wanted to make sure I was hitting the, that light area, and then I'm also going to do this light area, and then I'm just going to come around and color the wheel like normal. And you can use the brush or the bullet nib for this if you want. It's interesting. Let's see what will happen when I put the gray or the brown back over top of the gray where I was thinking that was part of the wall when it wasn't. I think I might switch to the bullet nib in a minute. Uh, we'll see. Brush nib's good too, because you can still get into fine areas, but you have to remember that the way that the brush nib works is it has this sort of, it gets a little frayed or splayed at the end, and you do want that, because you want the fibers of the brush to be open so that they take in the toning medium. So that's a good thing. When you first get them out, remember of your package, they're a little drier, scratchier, it feels like. That's just because they're covered in a laminate that protects them for shipping. So when you first get them, you just want to give them a little workout. Um, and that's just coloring in a, in a little, like even a, a two by three area, just soft coloring for a little bit will soften them right back up again. So my what I really want to do is just make sure I color my entire wagon with this hot cocoa and just solid. We are not fusing the pen right now. Another thing is I do tend to still go as I'm coloring in the kind of the direction right now of the I kind of color rather than just coloring the whole thing on this one. I just wanted to sort of use the alcohol inks to define each of the pieces of the wagon. So this is a board, that's the wheel. It blends regardless, which is the beautiful part about alcohol inks. So I'm going to leave that and we'll work on it. You'll see what'll happen. So, that's the base layer that you want to do for the wood. Now that you've done that, 
we're going to take the BR5 out. And I'm actually, again, going to use a solid color as well. And that's the key is that reminding you that these 20 colors are still just straight marker pens if you never fuse them. They're just a good quality, you know, professional quality actually, alcohol ink that you can use just like a normal alcohol marker. Uh, but that's kind of where the similarities end. Because when you get to fuse it, you can do some pretty neat things. So here what I'm doing is I'm just following the wood grain. And I'm overlapping it in brown so that it's going to look more in tone. You don't need a heavy touch with this, just a light touch. If you just go really lightly with the bullet nib, you can get really fine lines. Okay, I'm giving you a hint of what I'm going to do. <laughs> so, once I've done those initial lines, it's like, oh, that's nice, but we want to add some more distress or interest to this. So this is where I start using my mixing chamber. And I am going to start fusing the, um, the BR5 so that I'm going to get all manner of different shades. And this is where you just have to go with fun and abandonment and randomly as you start spending out the toning medium hop it around and give the wood a little whack okay so now I can start to see that it's coming a little darker so I'm going to stop but so you can see all these different tones that I'm going to get And what's important is that you go with the direction or the grain of the wood. Again, the more random you are, the more the color variation is going to be. Because you're getting it, you know, maybe light here, light, medium, darker, 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 even darker. I'm going to use that darker over here. How about over here? How about over here? So it's that sort of random hitting of the color as you get darker that you can get some pretty interesting effects. I think we've distressed the wood enough. <laughs> and I'm going to just smooth all this back over again. I'm going back over top with just a straight color. With the exception of this area here where I just want to keep it a little lighter. Now, this is the top part of the wheel, so I'm going to want to start to define that a little heavier. First, I just want to smooth over all these areas here. So here was my highlighted area, and then here's where it starts to go into shade. And I'm actually accomplishing this by using the solid color and giving it a couple layers. So that's a few tones darker. back over top. Now, still keeping the wheel defined, almost even giving it a bit of a shadowing. So the second coat, all it really does, a coat, <laughs> second layer, <clears throat> it just basically smooths out any of the bark. Gives it a bit more natural look. Now, I'm going to go back in here and think, okay, there's going to be some shading and shadow in here. I'm going to make that edging a little darker. I might even, just to give this a little bit more definition on the wheel, I think what I might do is hit this with the bark. And I don't think I want to go pure strength. I just want to give this a little 
extra depth in here. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to work on the watering can. And with the watering can, I think I'm going to use the crimson red. And this is a pretty dark red, so you have to fuse it for a little bit of time to get a good color transition. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend that my light source, again, is coming from this way. I kind of think of it more, I think of it this way. So it's going to hit somewhere around here, let's say. And we want to highlight that area where the, the light's hitting. So I'm going to work from light to here, and then from light to here, and then probably the same in here and here. So I fused that for about 30 seconds, it was a bit of time. And I'm just going to test off to the side, and I'm going to start um, I highlight a bit off center. As I'm coloring, I'm just going nice and slow and almost giving like a light overlap on the last line that I colored. I'm coming to this area that's the undercarriage, the under area where the handle is. And I would imagine that that's going to cast a bit of a shadow on there. And same down here. This area would be a little bit more in shadow. And still leave that area on top sort of light. Blend that out. So that's one side. I'm flip it around and do the other side. I just find it easier to manipulate the paper rather than manipulating the way I'm sitting. And again, we're going to give this a good fuse. And I've got it fusing straight up and down. I always like to remember folk, teach folks that. Let gravity do the work for you. You can see. And then always give it a test off on the side. I'm going to give that another little hit to make sure that it's really clear at the end. I don't want any extra red in there, so I know that that's clear. And then I'm going to start just overlapping a little bit as to where I was before. And then as I'm coloring, it starts to transition. In darker colors, you want to give it a good, if you really want a nice light highlight, you want to give it a good 30 second fuse. Take your time. They do transition, dark colors do, much faster than your traditional colors, like your, sorry, your lighter colors. So now what I'm going to do is the stem of the watering can. I'm just going to say that the highlight's somewhere around here. Ooh, I hit that good. Test it off a little on the side. There we are. I really want to get some more pure color in along the top there. There we are. A little shadow down there. Now let's hit this side. One thing I also might want to do with this, I would maybe overlay some gray in here at some point, just in case you want to have a, a more of a cherry red watering can. It's really kind of neat. If you overlay gray, the cool gray on here, the CG8, you'll find that it makes it very cool. <laughs> Turns it into a cool red. So maybe we'll try that too, just to show you the difference. And the purpose of this is all just to just to play and to learn different techniques. Um, you may work it all the way through and create yourself an absolute masterpiece you want to frame, but I find this is kind of more an exercise of Zen <laughs> and just a fun way to play with different techniques. So, one thing I had mentioned is that if you hit it with gray, it's going to look different. And I think I'm going to go ahead and do that. Oh, you know what? I want to color the inside of my watering can and everything and the handle. And I forgot that. Okay. This would be lighter. This area would be darker. It doesn't matter which way you want to do it. Same thing. This would be lighter in here. So we want to make that handle area a little lighter. in this area here. And then it's going to start to go darker. And we want that.
And the same as this, I'm going to say that the there's going to be a little bit of lightness at top. And then it's going to get darker through the center. And you can yeah, even overlay colors over colors to get a little bit more depth and dimension. Might want to use your bullet nib on this one. I'm living dangerously. I'm using the brush. And this would be inside. So that would be a little darker. Now, What's kind of neat is we can take the gray and do some shadow manipulation on this too. But I'm gonna always go a little lighter on the gray just because I just wanna see what that darkening of it does. You can play around with it just sort of like that. I did say I'd show you what it looks like. So I'm going to actually put in a gray overlay on the outside of this, going from the absence of color and then adding in the color. And this is just sort of a toned down version of the red. Option. You don't have to do it. You can keep it a bright cherry red. Or it can have sort of a toned down version of that red. It's up to you. Okay, I'm going to carry on coloring cylindrical items because I'm having so much fun with that. And I have to tell you, my favorite thing in the world is a blue pot. I think blue flower pots are beautiful, especially when you have the green in them. So I'm going to actually do these flower pots blue because it's my garden. So I'm using the BL6 right now and I'm giving this a good fuse again because I want to be able to go from a, a very light absence of color into full color. And I'm going to give it more of a forward area and I'm actually going to go sideways rather than up and down so that as I pull the color back I get that sort of even more cylindrical effect. I gave that one a good fuse. There we go. That's nice. Okay, that's one side. Let's work the other side. Giving that a fuse. And you might want to test off on the side just to see where your color's at before you jump in like me. But again, you can always layer, which is kind of cool. Now I'm not using this, I'm really diluting this color because I want, again, that whole sort of muted feel to this right now. It's kind of the look I'm going for, as opposed to the bright, bright, bright blue that the, the true blue that this is, is it's it's blue. <laughs> so um, that's this is actually a much more muted version of that. That's kind of neat. That gives my pot. I mean, I can go in if I want and add a little bit more depth in through these areas here where there would definitely be more shadow. And I don't really have to worry about thinking about the color family because, of course, it's all the same color family. It's a palette and a pen. So those are my blue pots. And I want to do the earth inside the pot. Fun thing I have with the earth is I like to use the bark because I like good, rich earth. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use it full strength and I'm going to dot, 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 dot. Just like I would 
like a stippling effect. So I did that, and I don't want to lose that dimension, so what I'm going to do is I'm flipping it back over to the bark, but I'm going on the brush nib side, and I'm actually going to give this a really good fuse, because I only want a very light tone to mute out those little white areas. So now you got some earth, and we need to add some plants. And I'm going to use the grass green on these. And I'm going to use a bullet nib. And we're still going to go with the idea that the light source is coming from here. So I'm going to fuse the bullet nib for a couple of seconds and just working the light source down. And then keep a little green under there. Now, the shorter the fuse, the faster the color transition is going to be. And we're working in a small area here, so you can kind of just play with it. This is definitely an underleaf. And that's how you do the flower pots. You might want to add some buds in there, maybe a little bit of red if you want. Okay, so here I'm going to do some color hopping, some color washing. I'm going to use the BB4. And I'm going to start with it on the brush nib. And one of the things I can play along with this for light sources, say that there's a light source in here. So I'm going to want to work colors darker all around these edges. So what I like to do is just start in the area that I need to be light and as the color starts to transition work my way out to those areas that need to be darker. So I'm going to mix and match and hop, hop, hop color all the way around. I don't want to lose that highlight, so I'm sort of playing a, a little bit of a game there with that. Here I'm sort of randomly squiggling around some of these flowers and just leaving the top parts light. I'm going to leave that alone right now because I want to get to some of the more, uh, more flowers like these ones here. I'm going to get in here and just work on some foliage and I'm just going to hit use the yellow green on this and I've got the brush nib and the goal is just to have that sort of a variegated effect where I'm going from light light on this part and then just darker on this side so I'm going to work all of these individual leaves this way just going light if, I, if I'm still in the light a little bit, I'm going to use a little bit of the color hopping method and then go back to get that darker bit. Yeah, I'm just going to hit this stuff back here in green but I'm probably going to add either a, some gray back shadow to that um, so that we can make these pop. But I'm just going to, in in the meantime, ooh, there's some blue peeking out. i got to get to that. In the meantime, I'm just going to hit it with green. And we might add some brown back there, something to add a little bit of interest and some depth. I think you get the idea. Basically, I'm just trying to color hop a little bit, get some variation so that there's some depth in this green. 
I'm just going to keep with this green and as you see I'm using that idea of getting some variation of color on each of the leaves. I'm going to do these with Warm Sunset. These would be really fun for color hopping. Light, 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 light. Darker, darker, darker on this side. Actually, you know what? I think I want those red. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue on what I'm doing here, but I'm going to overlay red over top and see what we get. I tested it and I couldn't resist. I have to try overlaying. And this is the PR4 that I'm laying over top. All right, now we're gonna work on the flower areas here. And what I'm looking at right now is trying to give this sort of, I'm again playing on the original picture that Terry did. And he kind of used pinks and reds and did more of a wash effect here, which I think is kind of cool. So I'm gonna try that, working the lower ones pink and some of the upper ones red. And I think I'm even gonna blend some pink and red together at some point too. So I'm gonna use the um, RD4 and I'm going to go on the brush nib and I'm just going to give this short fuses for the flowers that I want to be on the upper area because I'm going to want them to be a, a darker red so I want them to transition a little bit faster so just really quick fuse, quick test off to the side and just getting some slight tones. You could probably do this with your bullet nib too. I'm using my brush nib right now. I'm kind of coloring these upside down too. So I'll continue on down. But you could go in and, and do some of your dark areas first. This is more reminiscent of what people tend to do with traditional alcohol color marking with multiple pens. So that would have been one color red that I did there. And then I would come back in with a lighter color red and go over top. So if you want to do it that way, you can do it that way too. Okay, I think I'm going to move over to the pink now and just work a little bit on the lower part. And that's the um, PK3. And this one, I'm going to play with this a little bit. I'll show you some of the instances of how you can actually start by adding the dark first if you want to. And then we're going to come back in and, and lighten that up. That was the bullet nib I used. Now I'm going to use the brush nib to smooth that over. Giving that a light fuse. Because remember the lighter colors are going to fuse a little bit faster for you. So I want that to transition a little quicker because it's a small area. I have to say that I've thoroughly abused my pink. <laughs> Soon I think it'll be time for a nib change, which is fantastic because 
just popping one in and switching it out. The reason why I say that is you do want it a little bit frayed at the edge or splayed like I've got it. That's what helps suck the toning medium in easier. But there does hit a point where it gets a little bit too frayed. And at that point in time, you might want to switch out your nibs. You can see they're still very functional. And I'm, I'm just fusing the pink for just short, short splurts to keep it in that lighter tonal area. All right. So now what I want to do is I want to add in some red overlay. Oh, I noticed I missed a spot of green here. That'll bug me. Also, another great thing is you can use gray in areas that you think you've missed so it lifts it up a little bit. So um, let's just see what it'd be like to maybe put a little bit of a red overlay on this flower here. So I'm going to give this, uh, the RD4, again, a very medium-sized fuse because I do want it to be uh, have some color in it, even at the beginning. And then it transitions down. Well, that's an interesting color. So just by using the pink and the red, I'm sort of trying to recreate this watercolor type scene that Terry did. Kind of... Um, Tones that pink down. That's kind of fun. What we've done is we've sort of gone with, you could even go with deeper reds maybe on the upper area. So that's what I'm going to kind of go in here. And uh, we've mixed down to the pinks to also looking at overlaying the red over top of the pink. So play with those color tones and um, sort of see what you come up with and to get interesting depth and dimension and just using these two colors can give you a lot of color play on here. And last but not least I'm going to color a few more of these flowers. Finish her up. Again these are just color suggestions. You can choose whatever you want. I'm going to color this in the Y03 and I'm going to get that nice sort of light um, color on the top and then I'm just going to work my way down so I can get the darker colors in towards the center. I think I'm going to fill that part with brown. And this one fused pretty fast so I probably say you really only need to give it between five and ten seconds to get some nice color transition on this in such a small area that I'm working in. And you can certainly, if you want, mix a color with this. I want to hit those centers with brown. I love the way you can go over top and then just sort of cause a direction, like just doing this, making kind of fingers going out of color. And go back in and just add a little bit extra depth in some of these. Now if you want, you could put brown in the center here. Um, 
I'm just going to use a tone on tone. I thought I was going to use brown, but I don't think I need it. I think it's got some nice depth to it as it is. And I want to just fill in some of these little green bits. And last but not least, let's just finish up some of these little flowers on top. I'm just futzing around with my bullet nib at this point. So, basically, there's a lot of different techniques that we've done in this one picture. So just to go over these techniques. So here is uh, the finished picture that I've done of the gate. And um, I used a lot of different techniques in here. We did sky, we did uh, color overlays to be able to get different shades of green, cylindrical items like the pots and the flower count. We did color hopping on these flowers. We did some color variegation, you know, kind of moving around to get these different greens. More color overlays on the flowers. The wood grain was one of my favorite techniques. The brick, we did that, created moss. So. A lot of little elements that you can learn um, using the chameleon pens through this video. So take your time and just do them chunk by chunk and you'll see at the end you can create quite a beautiful picture of the garden gate.